Hey guys, what's up? Commander here. Welcome to my WWE Payback 2015 predictions. Let's just get straight to it. Uh, Kickoff show, we have the Meta Powers, which is Curtis Axel and Macho Mando versus The Ascension. Uh, this has been actually... I, I don't know, it's kind of weird. Like I, I sort of like it and sometimes it's sort of a little like cheesy, the whole... Curtis Axel thing. Um, I thought Curtis Axel was kind of a lot better um, when he was doing the Axel Mania thing like a month or two ago. I thought that was really good and was really getting into it. I mean, it's okay now. This like I was just watching like the the art videos with him and Macho Mando trying to like do the the shake shake thing. Um, I don't know. It's okay. It's it's not the best. It's not the worst. But at least he's he's doing something. Um, I think they'll win the Meta Powers. We'll finally see Macho Mando hit the elbow because um, twice he's tried to hit it and uh, the Ascension came out and like kicked their booties. So go with the Meta Powers to win. Uh, next we have John Cena versus Rusev in an I Quit match for the WWE United States Championship. I just feel like they should have built this whole issue with Lana more. Like I, I another th thing I have a problem with, I feel there's too much pay-per-views. There's not enough time to build these up so people want to see this this match. Like the the whole thing with Rusev and Lana really there should have been much more. Like the thing on SmackDown, you know, was kind of good, you know, where you sort of forced her to read something and and was saying some stuff. Um, but I just feel there should be more, you know. I th I think it's gonna end with like Lana throwing in the towel or or like costing Rusev the win or something. Um, there's been rumors that Vince wants Lana and Eva Marie to be like the top like baby faces of uh, the Divas division. Now you may think that sounds bad, especially the Eva Marie part, but if you think that, then you haven't uh, watched her Instagram videos uh, where she's been training with Brian Kendrick and she's freaking awesome doing bloody springboard DDTs, suicide dives, hurricane ranas, all these amazing moves that truly shocked me. So I hope when she does return, she's allowed to do uh, all these different moves because uh, it's really good, you know, it's amazing and she, it's, you know, proves that she actually does want to do it because I didn't think she did at first I thought she was just in it for the fame and the money or whatever but she seems to actually be into it so um, I'll be looking forward to whenever she comes back um, but Cena wins obviously if if, he's, if Rusev won I'd be honestly shocked like legitimately shocked if Rusev won but I just don't see it happening so Cena will win I feel that Cena's going to lose the U US Championship in in the open challenge at some point. Somebody's going to come out and and uh, Cena's going to lose. That's when I think he's going to lose the title. It won't be like a pay-per-view thing. Um, okay, so moving on. We have Seth Rollins versus Roman Reigns versus Dean Ambrose versus Randy Orton for the WWE Championship. And if Rollins doesn't win, Kane will be fired from being director of operations. The do. So... Again, I'd be really surprised if anybody but Rollins wins. You know, it, it would be a nice surprise. Um, it'd be good to shake things up if, like, a Dean Ambrose won it or something. Um, but, honestly, I just don't see it happening. You know, Seth Rollins will win. You could put a lot of money on it, and I think you'd, 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 you'd be, uh, be in the big bucks. But I don't think, so. I don't think anybody else is going to win it. I think Seth Rollins will win it. And he'll eventually have a match with Lesnar or something. Maybe like a triple threat. Lesnar, Reigns, and Rollins. At some point, SummerSlam, maybe. I heard a thing that Lesnar might return at Battleground, whenever the hell that is. Uh, it's probably like in two weeks' time, or a week after the Elimination Chamber, you know, because WWE goes quality, quantity over quality. Um, so, Seth Rollins will win this. I'm sure it'll be a good match. You know, when Am that, that match with Ambrose and Rollins when Ambrose won was just... That was an awesome match. Like, a truly awesome match. 
Um, in like the end of Raw this week was pretty good with Ambrose, you know, DDT and Reigns. And um, SmackDown just watched it. The end was pretty good where, where Rollins was having an interview after Reigns beat Kane, which was also a surprise. I didn't know it was going to be a like a no DQ match. Um, I, I just thought it was just going to be a regular match. Then they start pulling out the candle sticks and saying, oh, there's no disqualifications. I was like, oh, that's a nice surprise. Um, it was actually a, a decent match, you know, which is, you know, you don't usually get that with Kane. Um, but uh, Rollins was giving an interview then. What's his name? Uh, Dean Ambrose like walks behind him eating cookies, and then he's like, you "Want a cookie?" And then he smashes it in Joey Mercury's face, and they start fighting. And then Reigns comes in, and they start fighting. And then there was a really good bit at the end where like Reigns puts his hand out, and um, Ambrose like is a way to go for it. And then he picks up the title. I thought it was pretty cool. And then he plonked it on Reigns and says, uh, "I'll be taking this on Sunday or something." Um, so it's been an alright sort of build to this, uh, or, not much, well, or it wasn't on SmackDown, he, he hasn't been in a while, but, yeah, I I honestly think Seth Rollins will win. Moving on, King Barrett versus Neville. <sighs> um, what can I say? Um, they've been having good matches, you know, this whole Barrett, Neville, Ziggler, Sheamus... Um, but there's nothing, I don't know, there's just nothing really happening, you know, that's something that's lacking nowadays, there's like no real moments happening in feuds, um, but I'm gonna go with King Barrett, um, he should win, you know, he just became the whole, the king thing, um, Neville won last time at the pay-per-view, so I say Barrett will win this time, so yeah, Barrett to win. Um, then we have Ziggler versus Sheamus, which I feel should be like Sheamus or somebody, Sheamus or Ziggler or Barrett or Neville should be Intercontinental Champion right now, and I'm guessing that's who will be Intercontinental Champion come the Elimination Chamber thing. Um, probably Sheamus, uh, but Ziggler versus Sheamus, it's been a, a pretty decent uh, sort of build to this. It's been okay. Uh, I'll go with Sheamus to win, uh, since Ziggler won last time, but um, he did more about Sheamus' arse, so eh, maybe he wants to get some revenge. So, uh, go with Sheamus to win. Um, I'll speak about the Elimination Chamber thing later. Uh, next we have The New Day, uh, Big E and Kofi Kingston, or whoever the hell it's going to be, Xavier Woods, Kofi whoever, versus Tyson Kidd, and my favourite wrestler in the WWE right now, Cesaro, I love that guy, every time his music hits, do the swing, do the the M for Masters of the WWE Universe, love that guy, uh, had a good match with Big E on, on Raw, like just, he busts out new stuff all the time, like he had this, this weird pinning thing, I was like, what the hell is he doing? And then he turned it into a pin, and he won I'm sure he won with it. I was like, what? It was awesome. And he also, I think Big E was sort of out of it a little bit, but he tried to hit this belly-to-belly -belly suplex overhead thing, and Big E just wasn't going, and he, tr he tried twice and he wasn't going, and he just, he lifted him up, like, full strength, you know, like deadlift style, and... And he got him over. Like I thought Biggie was gonna land in his head, but he got him right over. It was just insane strength by Cesaro. Just he's just amazing, you know. And he t he is good on the mic, you know. There's a, there's app videos and that SmackDown Fallout thing, which was also an app video. Um, the guy is good on the mic, you know. I, s I say it all the time, but he is, you know. It's just Vince, you know, being a an out of touch racist prick. Essentially, you know, saying that he's, oh, he doesn't connect because he's Swiss. What a load of shit! What a load of shit! Cesaro is probably the one of the best things going in WWE today, and and Vince is just an asshole. You know, he really is. Um, but this will probably, I feel like the Fatal Four Way match will be really good. 
But if not, I see this being good. It's a 2 out of 3 falls match, so well, I don't know if I said that. Um, so I feel this will be really good since it was my favourite match, uh, Extreme Rules. Uh, I'm looking forward to it, uh, especially because of my man, Cesaro. So I'm going to go with the, the new deal will uh, retain. I don't think they'll lose yet. They'll lose at Elimination Chamber if they're going to lose. Uh, next we got Ryback versus uh, Bray Wyatt. I'm bored of Ray Wyatt. Just his feuds are pointless, really, and nothing's ha like. Let him switch it again. Nothing's happening, you know. Just, just nothing's happening. I f don't feel Bray Wyatt's ever going to be WWE champion. If he is, then so be it. But I don't think he's ever going to be a a big deal, in, unless creative or Vince gets the hell out of there. Because I, I just I don't know. It's just not working. Just, it's just not happening. Like right back and Bray Wyatt could be good, but n nothing's happening. You know. Um, but I'll go with Bray Wyatt to win. Um, next we got Naomi and Tamina versus the Bella Twins. Hmm. So Naomi and Tamina are heel, um, and the Bella Twins are now like automatically faced. Like they did nothing to really say that they were faces, but now all of a sudden we've we're supposed to believe that they're good people. And Paige is gonna return and st like start teaming with them. Like she returned at a house show or something last night, and sort of saved the day or some shit. And now she's gonna be like best friends with the Bella Twins, even though she hated them before she left. You know, and we're supposed to buy the Brie and Nikki or the good guys. You know, and Naomi's just been doing amazing at her promos. She's really good. The heel thing is really working. Um, I'm still liking that the flashy sh boot things. That's really cool. Um, but Bree and Nikki, uh, I just can't stand them. I don't know how they can be faces. They're just, uh, just, just can't stand them. Like they're always on about role models and shit. Like. How is someone who shows their sex toy collection on national TV uh, as an alcoholic, uh, insecure that if you don't like the way your body looks, just pump some plastic into it, you know? How is that a role model? Please. How is that a role model? I don't get it. And uh, speaking of insecure, if you look up insecure in the dictionary, you'll get Rosa Mendes, someone who has had fucking ridiculous amounts of surgeries and shit, f stuff in the face, Botox or whatever. I think she's even had ass implants, to be quite honest, because I remember that wardrobe malfunction. That was one weird looking fucking ass, seriously. Just, just an idiot, seriously, just an absolute idiot. Um, but, yeah, that's my little rant over. I'll go with Naomi and Tamina might win it. Paige could probably return here, I will say. Um, but yeah, I'll go with Naomi and Tamina to win. Um, now, <coughs> we have the Elimination Chamber, which comes up in two weeks. Two weeks, we're back to this shit of two weeks in between a pay-per-view thing. I thought they'd gotten rid of this crap, but no, we're back to it. But, I am quite intrigued, because when I first heard of it, I was like, oh, for fuck's sake. This shit again, like they did with Hell in the Cell for a few years. Um, there's not enough time to build to this stuff. Well, they have the time. They have like 47 hours a week of programming, but they can't bloody use it well. Um, but I'm intrigued because the matches that are going to be in the chamber are for the Intercontinental Championship, which Daniel Bryan vacated, and the tag title match which really intrigued me like this I was just like oh that is really interesting because I think what they're going to do is have like six teams in total and like have two teams in each pod um like I kind of don't like tag matches where like you pin one person and then that's it they're the whole team's out I kind of like where it's elimination style I don't think that'll happen here. I mean, it should. I mean, the thing's called Elimination Chamber, but um, it probably could end up going on really long, because uh, if there's six teams, that's like 12 guys, you know, so that's quite a... Uh, it could take a while, so it probably won't be that way. Um, but I think it'll be good, and if if it does uh, 
if the tiles is going to change hands, the tag tiles will happen there, I would say. Um, there's Eric Rowan, Luke Harper back. Um, and they were like going wild on Raw, fucking like GBL now, like placing bets like to how quick the match was going to be and stuff. Like that's not really something to, you know, like, I don't know, like brag about or say it's a good thing. You know, some stupid squash match like that. Like what? Fandango turned face and nothing's happened. Just nothing's happened. Nothing's happened since he's he fandangos now. And that's it. And he's just back to jobbing. W w what's happening there? Seriously. I, I don't get it. I really don't get it. It'll fucking happen to Neville and, and any other guys. Like, people... Like, I still don't get. People are always on about, Oh, bring these guys up to the main roster. We need this on the main roster. You just don't get it. Some people just don't get it that Vince is in control of the main roster. Triple H is in control of NXT. That's why there's problems on the main roster. And also something I don't get is why are the NXT house shows better than... Better than, eh... Uh, what's been shown on the weekly episodes of NXT. I don't get it. I'm going to wait to record my NXT predictions anyway after this. So I'll speak more about it there. I'll be uploading that on... Tuesday, um, but um, if anybody's even gotten this far in the video, I don't know, I really don't know, um, but uh, I won't be continuing the weekly NXT reviews unless the one after TakeOver, which could be really good like last time, but I won't be continuing it, and also when I've run out of my like gaming videos, I've got quite a lot, sort of a lot, uh, to upload. And I've got Wolfenstein to finish, um, but then I'm not going to be uploading any more gaming videos. Um, if you ask why, you clearly don't listen to anything I say in my videos, and you clearly can't see uh, the views on the videos. Like for the subscribers I have, I shouldn't be getting more than 20 views a video. I've tried sharing them in communities, gaming communities, and and making it the channel trailer and promoting it but it doesn't seem to help you know I don't know uh, I don't know I really don't know what more to do um, I think I'm just gonna give it up I'll continue with the pay-per-view predictions and that because it's kind of the only thing I kind of like speaking about but it's a waste of time with the game and stuff because it's kind of time consuming you know um, like I usually, rec like last time I recorded Wolfenstein for like six hours nearly, and in one day, um, and if you ask why, you don't listen to what I say in my videos, I've said it so many times, if you don't know why, you don't listen to what I say, and I'm not saying it, saying it, um, but, and then I was like done at like six o'clock or something, and then it was like three hours or something, maybe more before I was done like editing it and making the thumbnails and stuff and just for it to get the abysmal views that it's getting it's like what's the point you know like if I had like 200 subscribers or something it would make sense but 6,000? more than 6,000? whatever the hell it is? I don't know I don't really keep track of it Six thousand two hundred thirty-six, and yeah, I've got three million views, but it's it's not from anything recently uploaded, you know. So, yeah, I'll be continuing the WWE pay-per-view reviews and like the NXT takeovers, but I won't be continuing the weekly stuff, and I'm not gonna have time to do to. I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to stay up to date with WWE this week because I've got to fucking work at this quarry place um I'm an apprentice welder by the way if you're wondering um, I'm going to go to this quarry place and I'm going to be working like stupid hours like 7 in the morning to like 8 at night and I could sort of handle it like Monday, Tuesday but if, if it happens like the other days I'm fucked, you know I'm not going to be able to keep up with WWE um, that's why I fell behind, I spoke about it I think my NXT thing this week that 
um, I was like a month behind in WWE at one point. This was back when I worked with my dad, when it was ridiculous hours working with him. Um, and I was over a hundred episodes at one point behind in EastEnders, which is a show that airs like four times a week here in the UK. Um, so, if and I at that point obviously I that was when I gave up on gaming. I had like a two year break from gaming. Uh, because I couldn't keep up with WWE. WWE is always my first priority. And if I can't keep up with it, nothing else is going to happen. And I hate having to watch loads of WWE in a row because it's boring. You know? Really boring. <sighs> like, Smackdown this week was okay. You know, it was better than normal. And I'm kind of surprised I managed to stay awake through it because I bloody was up early. Um, like, last night I couldn't get to sleep. I don't know, I just couldn't get to sleep, even though I was really tired. And I fell asleep for like half an hour or an hour earlier the night. And I was tired when I went, when I wanted to go to sleep, but I couldn't sleep. So I watched this WWE special thing about, like, the Great American Bash. I got like, I only had like 10 minutes to go and I like fell asleep. Then, like, I woke up in the morning, like, nine, eight, nine o'clock, but he heard. My bloody mum was shouting at my little sister, and I just couldn't get back to sleep after that. So I was just up, up at like nine o'clock or something, watching Smackdown. Well, that's my little rambling over. Um, if anyone have even gotten through this, through at this point, well, appreciate it, but doubt it. Probably just rambling to myself. So that's it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you for my review. Um, Hopefully it'll be up before before I go to work, but we're starting an hour earlier. It's unlikely. And I don't want to leave it on, because then the computer will be on for, like, fucking... <laughs> like, if it would be on in the total for more than, like, 14 hours, which is insane. Because I wouldn't be back home. So, yeah, I, I don't think I'll do that. I'll just get left. And anyways, it, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. I don't think people watch the whole way through anyway. And I re very rarely get feedback, very rarely get comments. And if I do, they're usually mind-numbingly dumb. And make me want to facepalm myself into eternity. Because it's fucking just... And I don't, don't get like informative feedback, you know? I just... I don't know. I'm just stopping. So, see ya.